Yes, well, in many ways, you can differentiate between these different dimensions. Um, stamps have traditionally been seen as propaganda posters and sort of miniature memorials uh, for the nation state. But I would argue, as someone more interested in global history, that stamps can also shed light on, on bigger processes. So, for example, on colonialism, but also anti-colonial movements, uh, the history of internationalism and sort of these values. And even a, a new global cultural heritage paradigm can be sort of uh, traced via stamps. Um, maybe to give an example. Um, so, in terms of sort of international movements, it's a bit hard to say, right, because stamps traditionally are issued by nation states. But if you take them as a sort of collective, accumulated visual archive, you can see that also stamps project different visions of world order. So, for example, um, in the Cold War period, uh, stamps issued by countries within the Soviet sphere had a very particular socialist iconography uh, with peasants and factory workers and sort of tapping into the rhetoric of uh, the visual rhetoric of revolution. Um, and when you think of other alliances that were sort of not, you know, sort of this bipolar cold wor uh, world war model, uh, you can think of um, South South internationalism. So following the Bandung conference in, in the mid 1950s in Indonesia. African and Asian countries uh, started to cooperate a lot uh, and form an alternative sort of alliance to find their place on the world stage. Um, and, and many of these countries that were part of what was later called the non-aligned movement issued stamps to, uh, well, to commemorate conferences that they organized together, whether that was in Africa or in Asia, and to also celebrate some of the iconic figures. Uh, that were central to the movement, uh, for example, such as uh, the Prime Minister, the first Prime Minister of India, uh, Nehru. So maybe one uh, uh, aspect I could think of uh, in, in sort of the, on the cultural plane is that um, so uh, UNESCO became a very important international organization, and um, UNESCO uh, basically allowed local. Uh, cultural, historical, and natural sites to be transformed into world heritage sites. And these very sites, these monuments, whether it was architectural or, or more related to the natural world, uh, they were celebrated on iconic postage stamps. And um, I think here you can also again see that stamps, if you see it as a collective oeuvre, can shed a light on broader trends in, in, in world history, if you will. And the UPU, the UPU's role has been one, I think, of standardization, of coordinating and streamlining this process, um, and by bringing together different nation states, different uh, stakeholders, uh, and as one of the oldest, if not, I think, the second oldest international organization in the world, um, it has, I think, in many ways been a beacon of an example of how nations can cooperate uh, also on matters uh, that could be very divisive, right? Uh, and, and related to monetary issues, for example.